You hear me? Let's talk about it. Now, no channel talks about Yak saying the shooters that shot at Pac and Suge or the driver. Okay, we're just going to keep it with in Yak words. He was wearing a white baseball cap. Yacht gave a lot of description to this driver where I feel who's the shooter. I feel the driver is the shooter. According to what Yacht said, and when you put all the pieces together and actually break down Vegas, I'm going I'm to say the shooter was the driver. I could be wrong. We just go with Yak's statement. Yak made a lot of, put a lot of details out there in this voice recorder. This is a voice recorded statement. When you read the police report from Vegas, you will know that the only way they was able to get this from Yak was from a voice recorder from one of those officers that was on site. Respectfully, drop comments below. I played the Vegas tape over and over again to try to figure out this whole scenario and keeping it with the narrative what Yacht gave. I played the whole Vegas tape. You know, I always play the Vegas tape, but for certain situations, I got to go back to Vegas. Yacht said the shooter had a white baseball cap and he looked soft in the face, right? So when you there's a few people in white baseball caps. Um, first of all, you know, or similar type baseball caps. <sighs> Drop comments below. You know, people are saying like, "Yo, okay, if the DAs that's on this Vegas case with Keefe D, if they don't actually." get the right people inside that court for trial key figures that's still alive at least it's a fluke <laughs> you know nobody really believes this narrative if the DA is asking ED I mean was that the last time you saw Pac at the UMC hospital <laughs> I'm gonna need y'all drop some comments below yes sir hope y'all had a happy holidays yesterday you know, sending out blessing. Uh, it happened and it, it, it's, it's almost like seconds when you see when these things happen. So nobody really paying attention. When it comes to that, nobody would be looking like who face it is. You understand? And even Gaddafi, I don't think he recalled the face. He just said when he seen that arm come out the window, he knew what was about to happen. And once you hear bullet shots, and once you hear bullets, it's not like, you know, nobody thinking about who did it. You know, everybody, they you go into panic mode. You know, you go into panic mode, you, into panic mode, and you just trying to survive. You understand? But um, that's what Gaddafi said, if I'm not mistaken. But that was what Gaddafi said. You understand? Um, so ain't no telling, bro. I don't even know how many people, how many, um, we don't really know. Because like you said, you hear so many conflicting things. You understand? You hear so many different things and ain't no telling um, whose story is true and whose story not. Orlando was known to be like a, a dude who was with it. That, that was a known fact. You know what I mean? So it's not like it would be surprising. Like it won't be surprising if they said Orlando is the one that actually killed Pop. And you got to look at it from a point of view where he probably wanted revenge, if that's the case. You know what I mean? And he was already a person from what everybody know that he was a that was his get up. That's how he was. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't say, you know, if they say Orlando done it, I wouldn't really try to say what. Well, no, he didn't. I wouldn't really have no I want I want no reason to say he didn't do it. You know what I mean? Because one, he the one who got jumped. You understand? So, you know, when you young, 20 something years old and you got jumped and you coming from the streets mentality. One, you want to prove yourself. You know what I mean? You want to prove that, okay, they jumped me, but I, I look what I did after. Like, when you go back to your hood, you most of the time, you don't want nobody else to take revenge for you. So by, the, by them saying Orlando is the one who did it, and they saying Orlando was known to be that type of person, and he just got jumped, 
It sounds like it can be. And, and at the end of the day, God knows best. At the end of the day, you know what I mean? God and the people who were in that car, of course, know what really happened, what time it was. And that's when he heard the gunshots. Yafu Fula was interviewed the night of the shooting. Yafu Fula gave a statement. People say we never interviewed him. He was interviewed. And the big thing is everybody says that he said he could identify the shooter. No, he did not. He never said that to us. He said he might be able to identify the driver. That is what he said. And we tried to reach out to re-interview Yafu Fula. Well, next thing you know, we're getting notification from, I think it's in Orange, New Jersey, if I remember right, that he's been murdered in a housing project or something like that over some drugs. Finally, and even to tell my story about Gaddafi, for example, because when you look at the internet, most people only know the story that his mother is pushing, mm -hmm. in which I don't blame her. You know what I mean? Like you would never, no one can ever, even in my book, no one will ever hear me speaking bad about Yasmin. Um, no one will find anything on the internet of me speaking bad about that lady because she always been good to me. That's the mother of Gaddafi. He's a friend of mine. You know what I mean? She always been like an aunt. Of course, um, what happened to her son? No one. Myself, I can't imagine what she's going through even now, 20 years later. That was her only child. Mm -hmm. But I was able to be able to tell my side that most don't know. So I was able to touch up on that in the book. The situation, man, the homie. Shut up. And he's telling, he's protecting you guys from the police. Yeah, well, I mean, he could see that, the, you know, that the, the cop, yes. the cop, and then by that time, on. more cops was coming. You know, he was like, yo, y'all gonna get shot. The situation, man, the homie. Shut up. And he's telling, he's protecting you guys from the police. Yeah, well, I mean, he could see that, the, you know, that the, the cop. And then by that on. time, more cops was coming. You know, he was like, yo, y'all gonna get shot. Take the situation, man, the homies, you know what I mean? Pop got shot, you know what I mean? I say crazy. The the most interesting thing about the interview when I did with Chris Carroll was Oh boy, Officer Vlad. I just want to thank everybody for tapping in on this live premiere. We're trying to make sense out of this. Let's go back to Chris Carroll since he brought him up. And now he's looking at me, so we're looking at each other in the eyes, and this is kind of the first time he's even acknowledging my presence. And uh he looked at me and I could tell he was, you know, he was getting the breath together to tell me. And he looked me right in the eyes and we looked at each other and he said, fuck you. And he said it just like that with an emphasis on that F. So, allegedly Pac is running out of breath, I guess, to say all this. Suge said Pac and him was joking and laughing in the ambulance truck. Idi Amin says, Pac was telling him, yo, chill, chill, y'all gonna get shot. I mean, like, even Frank was saying he saw Pac take his last breath. I can't breathe, or something like that. I'm, I'm just trying to make some sense out of this. When did Pac actually <laughs> take his last breath for these people? To, you know, to really let me know. Uh, that's how we felt, so... Uh, he said that, and right after he said it, he kind of, he just kind of started, you know, started gurgling, and uh, you could tell he was in bad shape, and his eyes, he's starting to lose consciousness then, and his eyes roll back. And as it turns out, that would be his last conscious moment and his last word. Pablo, we heard the shots. We heard shots, because it was that close. Where he got killed was probably six blocks from the police station in Compton. It was right next to Compton High. There's this car wash right there. Um, we were in the back lot of our station, and we just heard a barrage of probably 30 shots go off and right just south of us. So we're all jumping in our car heading that way anyway. I jumped in my car. They jumped in their car. But as we did, the dispatcher started dispatching 
uh, units to roll to two gunshot victims. They say two at the time. A couple of gunshot victims at the corner at the car wash. So that's Willowbrook where we come out of the lot. I start going toward Alondra at the car wash. Well, the last street before you get to Alondra, I think it's Coco. Okay. I got my bells and whistle on, it, uh, undercover car like it, with bells and whistle. Everybody knew it in Compton because I had it for a couple of years. But as I was approaching to get to Alondra to make a right to go to the scene, I see this guy flagging. And subsequently, I, you know, he told me why. It was Lil Al, Michael Duro, mm -hmm. who was flagging me now because he knew it was me. And Orlando was in the passenger seat shot. Orlando's grandmother had passed away the night before. And apparently he had been drinking all night with uh, one of his best friends, uh, Michael Duro. And they went over to a place called Mom's Burgers across the street from the car wash to get something to eat. Well, he sees a guy that owes, uh, from another gang in Compton, a crip set in Compton, that owes his uncle and his friend DeAndre, um, I forgot if it was five grand, ten grand, yeah, somewhere in there about five grand, over some uh, cocaine. Yeah. So he decides, because they've been drinking and everything else, they got a gun in the car, they're going to go over and jam him up about the money he owes. Well, this guy's from another gang in Compton called Corner Pocket. And some of the other Corner Pocket gang members were there, and they started coming up, like, hey, what's this all about? Why are you jamming them up? And next thing you know, Orlando pulls out a gun and shoots two of the uh, corner pocket persons that are there, or shoots one of them right away. You know, so obviously from a law enforcement agency looking into this, I mean, all of a sudden there's war in Compton. I mean, you know, basic calls are made. And this is the, the reason for this uh, atmosphere right now. Um, Sugar's asking me all kind of questions about what happened, security, um, and then, what was your gun. Um, he says, here at the House of Blues in 1996, an off-duty Santa Monica cop working security confiscated a 40 caliber Glock handgun similar to this from a member of Tupac Shakur's entourage. About two weeks after that, I was contacted by Reggie to go over to Santa Monica Police Department to pick up this firearm. Hackey says he first showed the handgun to his FBI handlers and then turned it over to Reggie Wright Jr. A month later in Las Vegas, Investigators say it was a 40 Glock handgun that killed Tupac Shakur. Nope. Hackey There's believes the murder Tupac weapon was the same gun he gave Reggie Wright Jr. I believe it is. And here's why. Hackey says he asked Wright about the 40 Glock. He stated once I gave him that firearm, he gave it back to his daddy, who at the time was a lieutenant with Compton Police over the uh, gang division. He said his daddy booked that firearm in the property, which, you know, is really and truly far-fetched. And Hackey says time, six sure months was, after Tupac's uh, murder, he had another conversation with Reggie Jr. about the missing handgun. Now, mind it you, didn't go well. After that, Reggie told me, you know, hey, it ain't given time. You know, I have the money, I have the people, I can have you killed, it ain't given time. Hackey says he told his FBI handlers, and according to these transcripts obtained by Fox 11, also told LAPD detectives a decade ago that Wright had threatened, I can have you killed at any given time. After 1996, at the Soul Train Music Awards, the plan was they were going to rush that stage while Biggie was on that stage. We get to the awards, and it's like a real live army coming in, you know what I mean? Security looking like, whoa, what's all this going on? Tupac, myself, Shug, we went through the VIP area. That's when we saw Bad Boys and some Southside Compton Crips coming out with them. It happened, and it's, it's almost like seconds when you see when these things happen. So nobody really paying attention. When it comes to that, nobody will be looking like who face it is. You understand? And even Gaddafi, I don't think he recalled the face. He just said when he seen that arm come out the window, he knew what was about to happen. And once you hear bullet shots, and once you hear bullets, it's not like, you know, nobody thinking about who did it. You know, everybody, they, you go into panic mood. 
you know, you go into panic mood, to panic mood, and you just trying to survive. You understand? But um, that's what Gaddafi said, if I'm not mistaken. Like Gaddafi said, he seen the car pull up as if they was looking for somebody, and they looked into their car. And then when the car got up to a pot, Gaddafi said, all I seen is an arm. If I'm not mistaken, I think he did. Like Gaddafi said, he seen the car pull up as if they was looking for somebody, and they looked into their car. Like Gaddafi said, he seen the car pull up as if they was looking for somebody, and they looked into their car. And then when the car got up to a pot, Gaddafi said, all I seen is an arm. If I'm not mistaken, I think he did say a black arm come out. I don't know if he said not mistaken i think he did say a black arm come out. i don't know if you say big or whatever he just said the color was a dark skin uh, arm you know what i mean he say big or whatever he just said the color was a dark skin uh, arm you know what i mean and that's i think he did say a black arm come out. i don't know if you say big or whatever he just said the color was a dark skin uh, arm you know what i mean and that's when he said it, it's like his stomach dropped because he already knew what it was he said once i seen the arm come out I just knew that what time it was, and that's when he heard the gunshots. Uh, Valentino giving Yafu Fula was interviewed the night of the shooting. Yafu Fula gave a statement. People say we never interviewed him. He was interviewed. And the uh, big thing is everybody says that he said he could identify the shooter. No, he.